저기 저 별이 우리를 인도하다가 저 아기 누운 곳에 머물러 섰네 우리가 고대하던 왕을 찾았네 저 천사도 하늘에서 노래 부르네 시약게 경배하리라 나는 황금을 나는 몰약을 나는 유향을 들여 저 아기 메시약게 경배하리라 Is going to be today's top remnant. It is s o n g a n Park. He made such a great masterpiece to celebrate Christmas, right? He did a good job reciting the scriptures and also colored beautifully. How awesome is he in enjoying the spiritual summit? Each day. Let me introduce them again. Today's top remnant is Sodom Park. <laughs> Congratulations, s o n g a n I will send s a n g a a yummy snack after worship today. Other remnants, please keep trying. We'll be pe- picking each remnant as the top remnant. Please have this remnant time of offering yourself to our Father God and concentrating in prayer. Each day, I give thanks to someone's parents 
for helping him imprint the gospel every day. Sangwon's parents, please prepare the prayer for next week. Remnants, why don't we greet each other? Let's say Merry Christmas in a loud voice and wave our hands. Merry Christmas! <clears throat> Remnants, you are the ones who know the reason why Christ had to come to this world. As we worship our Father God today, may it be a time that we are deeply imprinted with the gospel. And now, why don't we all rise up from our seats and praise our living Father God as we do body worship. given us another dream. What is that dream?
this time, let us confess our faith together in one voice. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended to hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From then he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Universal Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Today, Deacon Cheumbe, who is the father of our top remnant, Shinan, last week, will pray for us. Father God, thank you for guiding us today to this place of worship. At this time, while we pray, may all the forces of darkness that hinders this worship be broken down, and may your kingdom come. Would you add unto all the remnants the word of God that they can believe in, and may them be the remnants that enjoy the happiness, happiness in getting to know you more. From the young age, may they love the word of God just like Samuel and pray wholeheartedly to become the spiritual leaders to block the age of disasters. May our kindergarten remnants pray every day for the construction of the building to save the 237 nations and the 5,000 people groups. May you add on to Pastor King Gitek who is pro proclaiming your word, and the teachers with the filling of the Holy Spirit and the five powers. Allow us to have victory holding on to the word that is proclaimed today. We pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, who is working even now. Amen. Jason, who enjoy in advance. And when they could not find them, they dragged Jason and some of the brothers before the city authorities, shouting, These men who have turned the world upside down have come here also. Acts chapter 17, verse 6. This person who is carrying a heavy load on his back and holding a book in his hand. This person's name is Christian. Christian. What's his name? Christian. Ah! Honey, honey, please come here with the kids. I was reading this book 
and the city of destruction that we are living in is a city that are doomed for the future, a city that is to be destroyed. In a while, God will judge the world, and fire and hail will fall from the sky, and the city will be filled with ashes. The wife and the children laughed at him. <laughs> Honey, the book that you're holding, that's the Bible. The Bible. Why would the city we are living in be destroyed? Hey, kids, I don't think your father is in the right mind these days, because he's so tired, huh? No matter how much he tried to tell his family. They did not listen. Christian, who was so frustrated, prayed to God. Father God, my family members are not listening to me. Please take pity on them and save them. After pondering about it for a while, he decided to leave the city of destruction alone, and find the celestial city. Dad, where are you going without us, honey? And my children. Your dad will be leaving first to find a way to be saved. So please leave the city of destruction and find your way to me. Christian carried a heavy load on his back, and the Bible in his hands, and set off. For the celestial city. And while he was on his way, he met someone. Hello, my name is Evangelist. Evangelist, why are you so sad, Christian? Poured out his concerns through this person named Evangelist. I read the Bible, and it says that this place that I live will face God's judgment, and one day will be destroyed. That is why I decided to escape from this destruction. But I have. No clue where to go. At this, the evangelist re replied, "Do you see that small door over there? A small door? No, I don't see it. Then, do you see?" That small shining light, a light. Yes, I see it. I see the light. Yes, that's correct. Go straight to that light. As you go straight, you'll see a small door. Then, knock on that small door. When you knock, someone will come out and help you. Really, you're telling me if I go there, I'll find a way to receive salvation, right? 
and I can finally let go of this heavy bag on my back. Thank you. Thank you so much. Christian thanked the evangelist many times before racing towards that light. And while he was going, Christian heard someone calling from the behind. Christian! Christian! They were obstinate and pliable that also lived in the city of destruction. Obstinate and pliable. What were their names? Obstinate and pliable. And obstinate said, Hey, Christian, how can you leave behind your family? Come with me. Let's go back. But Christian firmly refused to go with obstinate. If you came to bring me back, please just go. I will never go back to that place. I'm sad and my love for my family does not change. If I seek the way of salvation, my family members will surely come find me. Obstinate could not understand Christian at all. So he asked, What are you trying to find by leaving your family and the comfort of your home? Christian replied, what I am seeking is not something that will decay in the world and disappear. It is something that is above in the heavens that will never decay or change. It says in the Bible that God has prepared this in the heavens for all the people who are seeking the celestial city. After hearing this, Obstinate angrily went back home. But the other person that was with him, Pliable, said this. Oh, is that true? Of course, the Bible does not lie. It is the word of God. Oh, then what else does the Bible say? In this book, it tells us the way to live happily, enjoying eternal life in the beautiful kingdom. There, there is no sadness, no death, nothing to cry about. There is only joy and happiness, God and the angels, and you will live forever with everyone who is saved. After hearing this, Pliable went on his way together with Christian. Christian and Pliable were talking and walking for a while when something happened. Ah! With a loud shriek, 
These two fell into a place called Slough of Despond. No matter how much they tried to escape, they could not. They actually fell deeper into the swamp because Pliable was not carrying anything. He was finally able to escape, and Pliable angrily said, "What is this? Is this the happiness you spoke about?" You can go by yourself to that celestial city you're dreaming about. After saying these words, Pliable immediately left and went back home. Christian still could not come out of the slough of dust bond. Because of the heavy load he was carrying on his back, he could not escape. At this time, someone came and stretched out a helping hand and grabbed Christian. That person's name was Help. Christian, who received the help from the person named Help. Started to walk towards the celestial city again. <laughs> He was walking for a while when someone called on Christian again. That person was an old man named Mister Rolly Wiseman. Who considered himself to be the smartest person in the world, Mister Worldly Wiseman? It means that he is the smartest man in the world. And Mister Worldly Wiseman said, "Hey, you are worried because of the load you're carrying on your back, right?" Oh, how did you know that? I was actually going towards that door near that light, because I was told I can let go of this heavy load when I get there. Ha ha ha! If you're worried about that heavy load, you don't have to go any further. Who told you that? Who told you to go to that door? Someone named Evangelist told me. What? That person actually taught you the most difficult path. You were fooled. Since when were you carrying? That heavy load. Christian held out the Bible in his hand and said, "It was ever since I read this book. What? Isn't that the Bible? That Bible makes you realize that you are a sinner." That is how it makes it more difficult for everyone. You should not read that book. If you go to the place I tell you to go, then you'll be able to get rid of that burden on your back. Oh, really? Then, old man, where should I go? If you go. Over that mountain, there is a village called Morality. Go to that village. If you go, 
you will meet a person called Mr. Legality. If you find him, he'll be able to get rid of your burden for you. So Christian stopped going on the path he was on, and just like Mr. Worley Wiseman said, he decided to go over that mountain. But that mountain was a mountain so high that it was impossible to climb it. No matter how hard he tried, he could not climb that high mountain. Christian had given up everything and was crying. <laughs> Hey, what are you doing here? Remnants, who is this person again? Yeah, the evangelist. Evangelist appeared. Hey, Christian, didn't I show you the way to go to the door? Why are you here instead? Christian told him everything that Mr. Worldly Wiseman had said. That's when Evangelist replied, Oh no, that person had deceived you. Even if you go over this mountain, there is no one who will get rid of your burden. Rather, the burden on your back will become even heavier. Only Jesus can free you from the load on your back. Jesus died on the cross and solved all the problems of our sin. Only Jesus opened the way of salvation and destroyed the works of the devil. Therefore, never leave this path again and start on your way towards that small door again. Like this, Christian listened to Evangelist's words and gained strength and went towards the small door again. And finally, after walking for a while, Christian reached that small door. And there, these words were written. Knock, and it will be open to you. Christian knocked on the door. Hey, is this the door to go to the celestial city? Yes, that's right. Please come in. It was at that moment, a big arrow flew towards the small door. And the person who was guarding the door quickly grabbed Christian and pulled him in the door. Wait, where did all these arrows come from? And the door guard told him, this arrow came from that city across from here. The Lord of that city is 
Beelzebub, the devil, the devil. He is making the demons shoot the arrows so that no one, no one can receive salvation and go to heaven. Go towards that narrow path you see over there. That path is the way that you, Christian, must go. Do not go on another path on the way. The path next to it may seem broader and more comfortable, but is not going towards heaven but to hell. Like this, Christian, do not go on the broad path, the comfortable path that everyone likes to go on, but start it on the narrow way that the remnants in the Bible and the people of faith and Jesus walked on. He was walking for a while. When he finally arrived at the top of the mountain. Wait, isn't that the cross that Jesus died on? Why is there a cross here? Christian thought about the cross that Jesus died on Mount Calvary. While thinking about that, he naturally closed his eyes, put his head down, and prayed. Then suddenly, the heavy burden of sins he was carrying on his back and was finally lifted. That heavy load rolled and fell into a tomb. Christian shouted with joy, I am now free! At this time, the angels appeared out of the heavens and told Christian, Christian, by the blood of Jesus Christ, you have been cleansed. It's important what happens from now on. Now, go towards the celestial city as you enjoy the spiritual summit. Christian started to walk towards the celestial city once again. After he was walking for a while, he started to hear a scary noise. Two lions were on the path that Christian was walking in. Christian was so scared that he could not walk any further. But it was at that moment. Someone suddenly appeared and said, Why are you so scared? These lions are bound by a strong snare. What? These lions are bound by strong snares so they cannot attack you. God has bound them here so that he can test your faith. Hurry up and go towards the celestial city once again. 
After hearing this, Christian started towards the celestial city once again. On his way to the celestial city, Christian met three sisters. Before going towards the celestial city, the devil, your enemy, is waiting for you. That's why we prepared a gift to give to you, Christian. This is the shield of faith that can shield you from anything. This is the sword of the Spirit that can pierce through anything. And this is the key of faith that can open any doors. And wear this. This is the Armor of salvation that can penetrate through anything. Although this armor can penetrate through anything, it can only do it in the front. The back is completely barren. Christian received the gifts that the three sisters gave him and started towards. The celestial city once again. And he was walking for a while. But a great monster appeared in front of him. That monster's name was Apollyon. Apollyon. Apollyon told Christian. I am Apollyon. How dare you try to pass by here? I, I am a Christian who is going towards the celestial city after leaving the city of destruction that I used to live in. What? The city of destruction? That's the city I rule. How dare you leave that place and go to the celestial city? That will never happen. If you go back now, I can forgive you. No. No matter how much we try, we cannot be happy. In the city of destruction, it is doomed. You wicked devil, do not scare me anymore and get out of my way. Then Napoleon attacked Christian with a big sword. Christian Then blocked Apollyon's sword with the shield of faith that can block all things. But Apollyon kept attacking Christian with the big sword. And Apollyon pierced Christian's chest with that big sword. But the armor that Christian was wearing was the armor of salvation that nothing in the world can pierce through. Christian was so scared of Apollyon that he tried to flee that place and turned around to run away. Wait, this armor doesn't have a back. If I turn around, Apollyon will pierce my back. Then I'll die. Then I can't run away anymore. I will fight with the devil until the end. 
Like this, they fought for a while, and Christian lost all of his strength. Then finally, Christian prayed to the Father God. Dear living Father God, please give me strength. Please give me strength to your child, your remnant, so that I can win over this enemy, the devil. With the sword of the Holy Spirit that can pierce through all things, Christian pierced Apollyon with all of his might. <laughs> And Napoleon was greatly hurt, and flapped his wings and flew away. And Christian finally arrived at the magnificent celestial city. And the sounds of trumpets resounded from the heavens, and someone came towards Christian. It was Jesus. Welcome, my beloved son. I was waiting for you. Jesus put a golden crown. On Christian's head, you will live with me forever. Remnants, this story is called the Pilgrim's Progress that a person named John Bunyan wrote. For twelve years, while he was in prison, during the twelve long years in prison, John Bunyan discovered God's great will and left behind such a masterpiece. The Apostle Paul arrived in Thessalonica. In Thessalonica, he proclaimed that Jesus is the Christ for three Sabbath days. During this time, the Greek, the noble woman, and important people received the gospel, and he also met someone named Jason that God had prepared. Through these individuals, God's great works of raising up the church in Thessalonica arose. This current time period is a very important time before our remnants go out to the world. We have prepared ourselves so that we can worship every day through the prayer journal. I bless you in the name of Jesus Christ. Now you'll be the remnants who enjoy this important time of answers. Let us give offering as he prays. God's full body armor.
Summit time, joy overflows. Did you remind of yourselves of the reason why Jesus came to this earth by creating your Christmas wreaths? This week, we are going to sing a Christmas praise to celebrate Christmas. Then, why don't we make an instrument and become a family Christmas choir? You will need recycling materials and things to decorate with. Decide on the Christmas praise you want to sing and an instrument you want to make. Create an instrument with the materials. Today's mission, Family Christmas Choir, is completed. Yay! Let's gather our family members, play the instruments, and praise Christmas songs. As we praise, we will celebrate Christmas every day. Let's recite the scripture reading this week. For God so loved the world. That he gave his only son. That whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. John chapter 3 verse 16 
we will end the worship with the offering prayer and benediction from the pastor. Dear Living Father God, we thank you who were once with the remnants in the Bible and are also with our remnants even now. Through today's worship, may our remnants imprint the gospel deeply in their hearts before going out to the world. May the small offering we gave today be used for evangelism and missions. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the great love our Father God, and the working of the Holy Spirit be deeply imprinted in our remnants before they go out to the world and come upon all the remnants upon their parents and teachers from now and always forever. Amen.